Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a exciting sewing video that I've been posting about on my Instagram so you may have seen me speaking about it on there and it is to sew the Tilly and the Buttons Eden raincoat, well coat pattern, um, but I'm going to be making my very first raincoat in this vlog today. Well, hopefully anyway. <laughs> um, so I have yet to start it, I've yet to cut out my pattern pieces, but I wanted to start this journey with you guys so that if you want to sew this coat as well, then we are gonna basically learn together and I'm hopefully gonna provide some form of hints and tips along the way, but we will see how we go. But if you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and yeah, right. Let's talk about the Eden coat. So this will be the first like really extensive make of mine in terms of like lots of different uh, instructions throughout. A lining as well and a zipper. I haven't sewn a zipper in 11 years. So yeah, I'm a little bit scared. And also the process of like adding the hood and kind of like pushing it out of itself. Um, Debagging, I think it's called. That process to me, I'm like, oh my god, how do I even comprehend that right now? Um, but a couple of things to note before I get started is that I'm going to treat this pattern as m several smaller projects and that's kind of the way I'm going to get around it. So what I've done is I've actually read the instruction booklet that it comes with um, from front to back fully and I kind of know in my head what's expected from this make. Now that I know how it works and I kind of roughly can visualise how much work is going to go into this, I know that I can treat it as different makes. So what I mean by that is I am going to see the lining as one potential project, I'm going to see the outer of the coat as a pro as, and I'm going to see the hood and the hood lining as a project. And then I'm going to see the overall com combining of those components as a project. So there's like four separate things that I'm visualising in my head and I'm breaking it down in that way just to kind of make myself feel less overwhelmed about it all and a little bit more like easier to digest chunks if you like. So I've cut my pattern, I'm going for a size 4 in this pattern and I've added a tiny, well a couple of millimetres if you like, on the hips. Now I'm going to cut, go ahead and cut my fabrics but before I do that I'll show you what fabrics I'm using so that might be helpful. So I'm going to be doing the lining in a jersey fabric, let's just turn this the right way so you can actually see it. So this gorgeous sort of low stretch jersey, it's quite lightweight but you know it's quite nice as well, it's not too stretchy um, but this is really cute sort of rainbow print which is going to look really cool. And then this is my raincoat outer fabric, it is a fully waterproof fabric and it is from Textile Express so I'll leave the link in the description box below, they have amazing fabrics for like 7 99 a metre which is the cheapest I found and it feels amazing. I've got this fabric but honestly go and have a look, they have so many. Yeah, I've got this really nice pale blue um, waterproof fabric, I've tested it, it's definitely waterproof. And then in terms of poppers, I've got these really cool snaps, these are the Prim snaps, 12.4 uh, 12 millimetres. But I'm actually going to do a multicolour design and I'll show you my little illustration, my little sketch so you can kind of see what I'm going for. So this is the design that I'm going for. Um, this is, obviously I did this myself, this little drawing. Um, but you can see I'm going for the multicoloured snaps. That's kind of what I'm hoping it will come out and look like. And then I've also got some iron-on interfacing. It's a fairly lightweight one, um, really soft, absolutely fine. It's not going to make it too stiff. And then I've got my threads, I've just got polyester thread. The sewing community have let me know as well on Instagram that these are great needles to use if you're sewing this kind of rain coat fabric, like a waterproof fabric, anything that's like hard wearing and tough and a little bit thicker for your machine. These Microtex needles um, in the 90 over 14 I've got and then obviously jersey ballpoint needles for your jersey fabric. And then the last little tip that I've picked up from my research is to use these sewing clips. So they're clips that you would put your seams together instead of using pins so that you don't get pins within your fabric because you don't want to make any marks or anything like that on it because um, they will show. It's not like woven fabric where you can kind of like brush it away and it will, you know, 
fix itself. Um, so I'm going to use some little clips for this. I've also got a pair of pliers that you use for the snaps. They're from It's a prim one, but I've ordered a zipper, which hasn't come yet, but I've ordered a pale blue and a white just in case. Open zippers. Again, I'll link everything in the description box below where I've got everything for this. Oh yeah, a couple of things people have recommended but I haven't got yet. Um, a spray, like a waterproofing spray to spray on the inside seams once they're sewn because once you've sewn them together the tiny tiny little holes can actually bring moisture in. So I potentially am going to get some of that waterproofing spray. And then another one is a walking foot. I guess it would be great to have because um, you know you've then got it in your uh, equipment. I don't have the money right now so I'm gonna see how I crack on and if, if that doesn't work then I'll cave and I'll get the walking foot. Yeah I'm gonna go ahead and get started on cutting everything and then it's a case of putting it all together but I'm really excited. I'll make sure to show you kind of the fit process and stuff as I'm going along as well. So one thing to know is um, I've just laid out my jersey to cut it out it's really important that you do read this. Um, I sometimes skip this and I just go for it and cut it out. But it does actually say that if you're cutting jersey, if you're using jersey, to make sure that you cut the pieces down by 5 to 10 millimetres. So, you know, that's as much as half a centimetre um, to a centimetre um, because of the stretch. And I have seen people feedback that so it's often... Um, really big and baggy compared to the outer because obviously the outer has no stretch at all um, so I'm going to make sure I do this I'm going obviously by this one I'm just just kind of highlighting it just helps my mind a little bit because um, I find it tricky sometimes with lots of information on a page so this is what I'm going for in terms of my cutting and just making sure that you read through this um, as well so I've just cut my hood out and I just want to show you guys. Um, so I obviously cut out, sorry if you can hear Chris, he's downstairs with his brother. Um, so I cut out the hood and then what I've done is I've just trimmed all the way around, um, literally a few millimetres, but um, hopefully that should be fine. And I'm just going to make sure that I do the same amount on each piece, just so that it all um, goes together nicely. So I have put my fabric out and... What I'm basically trying to do is the part in the book um, to cut out the left front bodice and the right front bodice. And it says to do this with um, the wrong side of the fabric facing up, single layer. So that's what I've done. Um, and this is why it looks crazy because there's so much fabric here, like literally crazy. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cut these out and do that first. So I'm back... Uh couple of days later and everything is cut out and um, I've just today this morning uh, cut out all of my interfacing, ironed on all of that. A couple of bits were confusing so I thought I would um, talk through those and uh, let me just pop you down. There's quite a lot in this make to interface uh, as you'll see. This is all the pile of interfacing that I had to do and there was one bit that I was a bit confused about and I'll get to it. First one was the pocket flaps. If you're doing, sorry, the uh, pockets with a pocket flap, what you'll see is it says to interface all four sides um, to cut four pieces of interfacing, but when I've made pockets in the past, it's only been one side of the pocket needs to be interfaced and the other side didn't need it. So I don't know if it's to do with like the fabric or this particular pattern, but it says to do all four, so I was a little bit unsure about that, but I've just gone ahead and and done all of them. Next one that confused me was the hood facing, so this shape pattern. Um, cut one on the fold and cut one interfacing, which I was like, yeah, I did that, that's all fine. Um, I've obviously interfaced it. But one thing that really confused me was it also has this at the bottom, which is an interfacing for the, um, the snaps. So I was like, right, so you've got to interface it and then do double interface it with a, that rectangle, which is this pattern piece. And I've just I've just skipped that. Um, but those were the couple of things that I picked up on that I just thought was a little bit confusing that maybe you'll find when you're cutting out. Um, one thing I will say is it took me an entire afternoon to cut out the lining and the jacket and about two hours to do all of the interfacing this morning and like cutting it out and ironing it all on. So just take your time with it. Um, 
read the instructions because actually it does mention things like making sure you cut on the wrong side. This pattern has a lot of prep work, <laughs> so it's kind of like almost a, a section of stuff you need to do in itself. Is I've started assembling my lining now. It's looking pretty good, so I'm pretty pleased a bit. I've done my stay stitching around the neckline to prevent stretch. And I'm at the point now, I've trimmed all my seams and I need to stitch the arms, um, the arms and the side seams together, um, making sure that I leave a big gap in one of the arms because when it comes to debagging the coat at the end, um, you need to do it through the lining armhole. So just being mindful of like the steps that come up later um, and obviously doing it as you're going and just yeah it's just making sure you read back to back the instructions before you start assembling is like really helping me right now because I kind of know what's to come um, so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and put this together and then what I'll do is I'm gonna put it on and show you what the fit looks like of the lining here you go guys this is the fit of the lining um, it fits quite nicely all the way around and Got lots of room in there as well. The arms are quite nice and baggy as well, so I just feel like it's going to be a really nice sort of like fit coat. So yeah, really pleased with how the lining looks, and I've managed to match up the seams of my jersey lining pretty well. Pretty pleased with that. Well, good. I'm now going to move on and test the raincoat fabric with my needle first what have you, and then I will move on to the storm flaps. Um, but yeah, I wanna make sure that I can sew through the fabric first. You guys, you will not believe how amazing. That was my first test. So I've got in my sharp needles, which are these ones, the Microtech. I've got the needle in there. Um, I literally put it right sides to right side together. And I was worried that it would like slightly stick to this kind of shiny um, plasticky side, but it absolutely didn't. And yeah, amazing. But there we go, so you can see it there. Yeah, really pleased with that. So I can go ahead and start sewing. I'm gonna do the storm flaps first and I'll show you what they look like when they're done. guys it's day three making my Eden coat and I thought I'd catch you up because last night I did some late night sewing oh what oh yeah please yeah sorry I'm just vlogging as well when you asked me that Chris is making me a tea and a hot water bottle um so I thought I would show you what I got up to late last night. Apologies in advance, I have a little red nose and I have a cold. So if I'm a little bit nasally then I'm so sorry. Anyway, um, so last night I put together my pockets. So I started on the pleat pocket. Um, I've just been downstairs to iron them so I thought I'd catch you up on some bits that I've done. So here, oh, it's upside down. Here are my little pockets. Um, so those are done and ready. They've been lined with my jersey. The one thing I have probably found the most difficult so far is when it comes to attaching the jersey to the stiffer coat fabric because you've got one stretch fabric and one really stiff fabric. I wouldn't say really stiff, but like no stretch whatsoever, you know, no drape, like really rigid kind of fabric. The two together are like almost like they're not meant to be. Um, so sort of sewing those together is a little bit tricky, but I'm just using lots of clips, um, these sort of like, clippy things, lots of pins, and just taking my time. Like usually I'm quite a fast sewer, but I'm just really taking it slowly, making sure that the stitch is um, sort of like a perfect stitch, there's no bumps or um, clumps or whatever you like um, in them. I've also got my pocket flaps. So today is a day of assembling those onto the front of the jacket. I'm very excited uh, to do that. I think it should actually be quite straightforward and yeah, fingers crossed. My machine sticks a little bit to this fabric. You know, like I've mentioned some of you saying that your fabric might stick and not glide through very um, easily, but actually it's been absolutely fine. So also what I sewed last night was the hood. I actually got quite far with this um, and you can see, I'll just take it apart. There's the piece of lining with the outer facing 
and I've just sort of placed them together because I'm about to sew this part which goes around one side up and over and then to around there now out of everything that I've sewn so far hood was probably the trickiest part and obviously I didn't show you the process of sewing it last night but one thing I did find was the stretch jersey fabric, even though I cut it down a couple of millimetres all the way around, still was coming up a little bit bigger. So I feel like people that have suggested using a walking foot, this is where it probably would have been handy for me to have one. Um, because I feel like the top feed dogs was pushing the jersey um, too much, only ever so slightly, like too much. And fitting the stretch fabric, again, like I mentioned, to the stiff fabric, um, was really, really tricky around like the curved edges. And those Microtex needles are incredible. Like it got through Jersey and this fabric. Um, this fabric that I got, this is from Textile Express, which I know I've mentioned to you guys, but like sewing process so far has been such a breeze, touch wood. Um, so yeah, I highly recommend going and getting this one because I'll obviously link it below. They've got a few different colors as well. So yeah, I've been so impressed with it and it's been amazing. Like. I can't fault it so far. I mean, I haven't yet put the lining inside the actual jacket. I feel like that's going to be the, probably the trickiest process, um, apart from the zip, but I'm still waiting for my zip to come in the post. And when the zip comes, I can start to put it all together, and that's going to be, like, the crazy bit. That's going to be the bit that I'm, yeah, um, a little bit nervous about. But so far, the different sections have come together super easily, yeah, it's taking time, but I knew this project would be um, a slow one. I've got my front panel here, and that pocket is ready on there to sew. And I, I never felt tomorrow closing in this fast. Oh, I guess time's in a rush. Leaves are falling down, but at least they grow back. Afternoon. So it's the same day but uh, later on I've been for a big afternoon walk and um, I've come back and did a little bit more sewing and I thought I would show you what I've got and achieved today um, as I'm about to stop sewing for the day now. Um, I've made really good progress in the three days that I've uh, been sewing this and started this so yeah I just want to start off by saying I am so pleasantly surprised at how easy um, it is coming together and I don't want to use the word easy um, too lightly because I understand everyone's sewing levels are different but before starting this I was quite intimidated and nervous and like although I was excited to embark on doing it I was a little bit like oh my god this is my first coat and I have no idea what I'm doing um, but so far the sewing journey has actually been so surprisingly easy simple simple's a better word um because i just broke it down i've been doing a little bit at a time and as soon as i feel like i'm gonna get frustrated or as, as soon as i feel like i'm a bit tired i stop so it, it's meant that i'm really enjoying the the sewing and um, i'm not like overdoing it i'm taking it a little bit at a time and i've been really really enjoying it so my front, right and left pieces are done, like panels. Um, I've got my pocket on, my storm flap is on. The pocket, I'll just show you a little close up of that. In my opinion, I think it looks really, really nice. The finish is great. The only thing I would say is it's um, a little bit difficult to iron. So it takes a little bit longer than your usual make to iron because the fabric is just, you know, it's not really designed to be ironed that all that well. Uh, being waterproof but actually once you use a little bit of um, heat proof paper I've got these like little sheets um, that came with my Cricut machine so I'm not sure what they're called but any kind of like heat transfer paper. Or... One little tip that I would probably mention that's what I was thinking about as I was sewing it I was like um, it feels quite natural to make this and I kind of knew what I was doing was because I'd actually already made the Tilly and the Buttons Alexa, which is a romper and a jumpsuit. And the pockets are very, very similar pockets to that pattern. And the, in terms of the placement and putting them on the, the, the front pant, the front of your body and stuff like that is very, very similar. Um, and because I'd made two Alexas before, I've made a romper and a jumpsuit. It was almost like second nature to put these on. It kind of felt really natural. Um, so what I would say is if you're still looking at this pattern and being like, oh my God, like there's pockets, there's zips, you know, 
I would really recommend trying a few other Tilly patterns before maybe starting this one. I think it's just because I'm so clued up with Tilly patterns and I sew them all the time that the language in the instruction book and obviously the actual pockets themselves I am familiar with because they're very similar to the Alexa pattern. I've also finished my hood. So my hood is pretty much all ready to go. So I've understitched the hood, I've understitched that bit. Um, again, it was just like, it's weird because once I was in the process of sewing it, I didn't once think like, oh my God, what am I doing? This is scary. Um, I was so focused on the task at hand that you kind of forget that you're sewing such like a, um, you know, a unique shape because I've not sewn a hood before. Uh, and actually came together quite well. The only thing I would say is the jersey fabric lining, um, it has stretched ever so slightly to the point where you've got that kind of gapiness to it. You see what I mean? And um, you can see this kind of like gapy part to it. But actually, if I put it on my head, you can't even really tell. And this bit, so one of the pieces you sew all the way around and the other piece you don't, you just sew downwards, so you've got it open. If I hold it back, you can see what I mean. That shape, like that. Um, and I just made sure to, it didn't, it didn't say this in the instructions, but I just looked at the picture in the instructions and I was like, right, okay, I just need to do that. Um, and it was basically to snip that so it would come outwards, if that makes sense. So like, if I show you the picture, and you'll see here, uh, look, so one of them is just straight and one of them goes round. But it doesn't say necessarily just do a little snip on that bit there. But I could see it here. So I just kind of read everything, followed the instructions, but also looked at those pictures and thought, as long as my hood looks exactly like the ones in their photos, I know it's kind of right. So I've got to that point, look, where I've got that little bit out. It stays stitched across um, at the bottom here, so it's all ready. You might be wondering why I haven't followed the instructions like back to like front to back, because the hood comes a bit later. Um, and what I would say to that is, if like I'm waiting on my zipper to come in the post, so I'm doing other th other things that I can work on that doesn't involve having to do the jacket process first. You don't necessarily have to do it in the order. If you're a bit more confident, you can just go ahead and do the other pieces. So for example, I made the lining before it told me to in the book. I just thought, well, that's a separate thing. I can just put the lining together um, and that's done. And then obviously worked on the outer as the book suggested and now the hood's there as well. So all those components will come together. And then the last thing is I'm ending my sewing today just having put the back panel to the raglan sleeves and that's kind of it. Um, I need to trim my seam allowances and attach the sleeve to the front panels but I've got to the point today where I'm a little bit tired, I'm feeling um, like fatigued and I know if I keep going I'm going to start getting um, not frustrated but a little bit like impatient so I'm going to stop there for the day and then I can come back to it but Hi guys, it's day four of sewing my Eden She here the tiny place I really think the sleeves are a little bit like long and big at the moment but I think it just feels a little bit weird because it hasn't got the lining inside um, but when you pop it together sort of like that fits really nicely on the body. Not much more I can do now until the zip arrives. Um, I think I can attach the uh, the front hem facings to the lining but other than that it's now just a case of waiting for the zip and yeah. Um, today I was getting slight looping from the bobbin um, just every now and again it was doing like a loop stitch and it was like really weird and I did read somewhere and I can't remember who said it but to change the needle quite frequently with this make because where it's such like a weird stiff fabric um, it can be like a little bit blunting on the needle quite quickly so I'm about halfway through the make and I was getting that looping in the bobbin and I decided I'll try a new needle and see if that helps and it rectified the, the issue so just like a little note that if you get any kind of tension issues or thread issues of any kind try the needle change first which leads me to actually I'll show you the tensions I'm working with because that probably would have been a good thing to show you guys earlier I use a Janome front uh, top loading bobbin machine 
and I've got my thread tension on four and then my foot tension on two. Because the fabric is quite thick, I've just left it on two for thicker pieces, but when I was sewing the jersey, I obviously had it on one, because for stretch, you have it lighter. And then any kind of, like, uh, bits that are a bit thinner, I just put it on normal, which is, like, three. So that seems to work absolutely fine for this. Um, and then just a normal stitch length. Hey guys, so it is zipper day today, and it's about uh, five days after I uh, filmed the last piece of footage. Um, I had to wait for the zipper to arrive and then it was too small so I had to reorder another one. The zipper is still a little bit too small and I'll show you that in more detail in a second. I'll, I'll do it top down and show you guys. But what I'm going to do is I've actually got a cheap uh, test zipper that I'm going to actually test So Similar to the instructions, I've laid out um, a bit of test fabric and a test zipper just to practice the using the zipper foot. So if you're like me and you're not familiar with zippers, then this is probably a really good idea for you guys as well. Um, so I'm going to do a test run with this zipper and just see how it goes, basically. But um, what I've done is I've followed the instructions on how to lay it out, um, like this. And I'm going to try out and stitch it and see how it goes. And then this is my zipper. Got a really nice, uh, chunky zip. And this one, I think this one was from eBay, but I'll link the one that I got below. Um, I went for a few different ones because the ones I ordered previously uh, were too small. So yeah, I got this one, which is quite nice. It only comes down to here. That's with the edge of that. And this is a 20 inch zipper, and this is what the pattern recommended, 20 to 21 inches. So if you want your zipper to go right to the bottom, then get a 21 inch um, and I'm, I'll bear in mind I'm making a size 4 slash 5 um, so that you can kind of see that there um, but yeah so I've got a 20 inch and, it, and it's got this much space left at the bottom the battery died sorry so I'm back I've got, I've got this test piece um, so I did the test zipper in there and actually I'm really pleased with how this has turned out so let me just touch so you can see it's turned out pretty well for my first zip in years. Yeah, wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, basically. So now I'm going to move on to the actual <coughs> zip itself in the jacket. I'll show you what it's going to look like. I might have to pin it on the floor so I can have it all like nice and out and flat and stuff. Hey, so I join you from my floor. I've just had a bit of a, a mare. And when I say mare, I mean nightmare. Um, I just don't even know how to describe it. So basically, um, when I was cutting out the fabric at the start, I thought originally that this sort of like canvasy side of the fabric was the wrong side and that the shiny side was the right side. So I cut it all out and then I messaged the uh, fabric company, uh, Textile Express, who are amazing by the way. She wrote back and she was like, oh no, no, the canvas side is the right side. It's meant to look like a canvasy jacket, even though it is waterproof. And I was like, okay, no worries, no fine. Uh, you know, I've cut it all now, but it's, you know, I've cut loads of stuff on the different sides before and it's not been an issue. So I just thought, yeah, cool, no worries. Um, I'll just make sure that I sew it, obviously, with the canvas side, the right side up. Um, I've got all the way through the jacket. You've seen it. It's pretty much assembled, no issues whatsoever. Um, and actually I've been pleasantly surprised slash shocked at how seamless the whole situation's been. Um, and it's just embarrassing, to be honest, because now I'm just laying it out exactly as the instructions are telling me to, uh, to put the zip in. And what's happened is the left side that's meant to have the narrow neck doesn't have the narrow neck it has the wide so somehow I've mirrored the panels and I'm guessing it was in that cutting process but what I now have to do to rectify the issue to make a functioning jacket is to mirror the instructions so as if this isn't complicated enough I may have made it look easy it's definitely not <laughs> Um, four days into sewing it, or four sessions into sewing now, and 
I've got this far and there's no way I'm going to start again. So I have to mirror the instructions from now on. Don't do what I do guys. If you're let, I hope you watched all the way through this video before you make your own and just make sure that you know the right side up of your fabric when you cut it and you won't have this issue at all. But I'm going to turn the camera around, I'm going to show you the zip and I'm going to try and talk through how I'm going to rectify it. Although I, at this point, don't know if it's going to work uh, and I have a bit of a headache. But yeah, um, we're going to do it. Uh, I just hate sounding doom and gloom, but, you know, I'm vlogging, it's meant to be quite real. But I just had a bad day yesterday and got made redundant, so um, I thought today it would be a good day because I could use this as escapism, but, yeah, clearly not. Anyway, um, I'm going to turn the camera around and then I'll show you um, what the situ is. Oh, so this is where we are, guys. Um, right, I'll try to explain it. This is the instruction, so I laid it out exactly as I needed to, and sadly it uh, wasn't right. My jacket wasn't right. Um, so what I've done is I've mirrored it, <laughs> uh, and I've had to figure out the zip basically is flipped. So in the instructions, the like actual main component of the zip is on that side. But now it has to be this one. Does that make sense? And the it's basically just reversed. It's really hard to explain and it's given me a headache. But essentially what I need to do is sew that. Sew this one. I'm going to go away and have a think about it. Because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and I'll report back. Okay, I'm back. And I have taken myself away for a few hours. I've had a coffee and I'm back here. Um, now, if you follow me on Instagram, I'll talk like this. Hang on. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I uh, just did a story feature about failing and feeling like not not feeling embarrassed when you get things wrong. Um, so a hashtag sewing fail. <laughs> um, this is not a fail because I can still put it together. However. It's going to be a bit of a headache, um, so bear with me, and I apologise, like, obviously it's going to hinder um, people sewing it the normal way, because this part of the make is just, like, going to be a bit confusing, so it might be a case of me just having to, like, sew it together and then, like, sum up, basically, what, what happened. Um, but I essentially just have to mirror the process, so my lefts are now my rights, and my rights are now my lefts. So this is what I was getting confused at, basically... The zip still needs to stay the same, but instead of the teethy part, which is this part, going on this side, the other side has to go on here, and then this one goes on the facing, and the facing attaches to the lining. So I was getting confused, but we're, we're all good, guys. This is where we're at. I'm going to sew this together, and then I will um, report back. I'm on a one-way track. So I'm just about to, um, I think it's called understitch uh, the seam allowance to the lining and one thing I want to show you guys because it literally confused the hell out of me I was like why is my zip facing the wrong way but when you actually put the jacket on you have to remember that this is the right way because this is the lining so the zip will actually face outwards the right way and this bit becomes the flap that has the poppers on. So it's right. Um, if you get to this point and you're just as confused as I am, but <laughs> don't worry. I I mean, I've had my share of upset today with this bloody zip, but it is meant to look like this. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay, guys. So I'm just sewing the sleeve together and I thought I'd show you um, this bit. You're a little bit, it's a little bit unsure um, basically, like you roll up this two inches but don't worry too much about the exact, the exactness of like rolling it up because all you're doing is sewing the sleeves together um, and you just need to make sure that they're not twisted but it's actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be so yeah I'm going to stitch them together and I'll show you what it looks like. 
here you go you guys so the sleeve comes over like that and you have it rolled and you pop it inside the lining sleeve matching up seams um, the underarm seam and then essentially all you're doing is stitching these two together right sides but you kind of have to do it in that weird way that it says in the instructions so that you can get to the edge um, and get it through the machine you know get it onto your machine properly so like this it doesn't have a picture to show you really um it shows you like the end result which is this but it doesn't really explain properly why you need to roll it up um but it's essentially just so you can get that into the machine if that makes sense so yeah um i've now got to i've now got to turn it all inside out um and it's ready to put it through the whole like this um really exciting because i'm coming up to the end stages i've got through the worst of it um and what i'll do is i'm gonna finish it all off what it means to grow I got there in the end through turbulent times and I'm here to tell you that it is possible. You can do it. Um, so as you will know throughout the entire vlog, I had such a positive experience sewing the Eden coat, much to my shock because I just assumed it was going to be this horrendous <laughs> sewing journey of like confusion and everything. And actually, overall, it was pretty easy like or simple um, I wouldn't say easy it was a simple process when you broke it down like I mentioned at the start however you saw my frustrations I had a day where I was just losing my mind I had to mirror the process from the zip onwards and as much as it was intense and a little bit like confusing on the day because I was getting in my head a little bit Actually, overall, it was a simple matter of instead of the flap going over one side, it goes over the other side. So that's basically all it was. But obviously, when you're attaching your lining into your coat with that zipper as part of that process, it just made me have a headache. So just to learn from my experience, make sure you know your right and your wrong side of your fabric before the cutting process, which leads me to stress yet again how important it is to read the cutting instructions. But I'm here to tell you that it's possible. I have never made a coat before and although I probably make it look easy in my vlogs, sewing definitely isn't easy and it is a practice. And I just found breaking it up into the chunks like I mentioned really helped put this together as a make and I'm so proud of it that I actually think I would do it again maybe not just yet <laughs> I think if you guys are considering making the Eden it's so possible I'll leave everything I mentioned in the description box below Textile Express the fabric company thank you so much again for gifting me the raincoat lining fabric and the uh, snaps like really appreciate it couldn't have done this without you and I'm literally so close to buying some more so I can make another colour. I really want a pink one or a bright yellow raincoat next. I think that'll look really cute as well. So yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this vlog. I really hoped that it was tips and stuff throughout that, you know, really helped you guys. Also, I just thought it was so important to include the part of me stressing because this wasn't an easy make. It was stressful sometimes and, you know, I learned from it, but if you guys are making something just to remember that we all have sewing fails like even the most professional like people uh, that i look up to you know fail as well just join me over on instagram we can hashtag sewing fail together i've got a highlight on my on my instagram feed now where i'm saving all of your like fails and by fails you just learn don't you and, like you, you just it's progress so it's just reminding yourself of that and I've now got a really awesome raincoat to show from it. I'm so pleased with it and I hope you enjoyed seeing it come together. So yeah, thank you so much for watching guys. I really hope you enjoyed this vlog. I know it was a long one, so thank you if you've watched all the way through and you're at this point with me now. And good luck with your sewing. I'll see you next time. Bye!